When you first learned on the harp, uh, was it pucker, was it tongue block? Were you exploring both? Give us an idea. Yeah, this is a good question. Um, I started with pucker, mm -hmm. although I knew, I think even back then, in the, in, you know, when I was first buying harps, you know, the little sheet of paper. Did most people, yeah. Yeah, but there's a lot in there. Yeah, yeah. You know, don't take that for granted, <laughs> you know. Those are gone now, unfortunately. That, that's, because they covered about, you know, the, what they were showing you was tongue blocking technique, mm -hmm. you know. So I learned to do some of that, but I was, I was probably focused more on puckering at that time, mm -hmm. lip pursing. Um, and then one day, not too far into the beginnings, um, I heard this big Walter recording on an album that was a collection of stuff on, I think it was on Argo. And there was a version of uh, Walter Horton doing Hard Hearted Woman. Mm. For some reason, I mentioned this recording to people. Not many people seem to be aware of it or have heard it. Mm. And uh, it's Walter, play, Big Walter playing in first position. Mm -hmm. And most players have know how it goes, you know, this, um, uh, this intro. And I knew, I knew it was first position, but there were artifacts to the sound, to the, you know, to the way it actually sounded with him doing it. I'm thinking to myself, there's something else going on here that's not coming from what I'm doing. You know, it's not coming from this puckering approach. And so I concluded, well, it must be tongue blocking. So from that moment on, I got deep into tongue blocking. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point with the tongue blocking <clears throat> where it, it became, I used tongue blocking for everything except for those articulations that involve the ticket tip of the tongue, like digga, 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 you know, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, which I do a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, I do a lot of that kind of tonguing. Which is showcased in Whammer Jammer, for example, in the lead oh, yeah. choruses, yeah. Well, Whammer Jammer draws on every possible technique, damn near everything you could, deal with is in there. And let's definitely talk about that in its own little entity yeah, in a moment, yeah. please. So at that point, now you're tongue blocking everything except art articulative passages that yeah. require the, the, or yeah, maybe are better pronounced right. than the part. And I stayed that way until a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. Then I had a new idea. I started thinking about the idea was, okay, forget all the praise, forget all the criticism, you know, go back to square one and admit to yourself, you know, I never got as on top of puckering as I did on tongue block, hmm. you know? So I thought, okay, I'm gonna fix that. I wanna hmm. fix it and see what materializes when you do that, mm -hmm. you know? And I started to get to a point where I started to think, you know, I'll bet little Walter, for example, did more puckering than he did tongue blocking. Hmm. Despite the fact that I had always believed, I had this mindset that you could get a much better legato by using tongue blocking. And I, I believed that to a point that it inhibited me from committing to, okay, despite what your belief system is, Mm -hmm. Dispense with the belief system. Give it a try. See if you can do it. Master this other way. Mm -hmm. You know. So I'm still working on that, and um, it's amazing what you can achieve when you have the right mindset and stick with it. You know. Um, but what I had always observed about uh, comparing tongue blocking to puckering is that the tone quality is different. Despite what you're, you know, what you may be more comfortable with, whatever approach, don't go with something just because you're comfortable with it or that's what, you know, I started learning that way, I'm gonna stick with it. Mm -hmm. It's a different sound. And it's not, it's a different sound, not just by virtue of artifacts that come from tongue slapping, mm -hmm. you know, but that's a big part of what's in Whammer Jammer, mm -hmm. you know. That's like really, a lot of stuff I play. I mean, I got, I got to a point where I was doing that so much of the time, I got to a point and started to realize, you better develop ways of producing the tone that don't always make that mm -hmm. happen, sure. you know? Um, 
but they sound very different. The shape of this cavity in the mouth, by virtue of um, tongue blocking, is a whole different shape, different length of chain. You know, it's just different. Mm -hmm. I find that the puckering approach tends to produce, for me, uh, a much more trumpet-like sound, mm -hmm. which I, I like that. You know, if I want a real penetrating arrow-like, bam, you know, kind of a note, I will take that approach. Uh, if I'm more interested in a, a fat, smooth, legato connection of notes, I may tend to focus more on, on uh, tongue blocked. But you know, you can get into this, we're all creatures of habit. And sometimes the artifacts that come from playing harp, you can overemphasize them where you get to a point where like, you're always playing like with this tongue slap. Mm -hmm. That happened with me. And uh, so I consciously wanted to get away from it um, to more consciously control and choose which I'm going to do. Now, I've gotten to a point, and I've been this way for a long time, uh, where I can instantaneously switch from one approach to the other in midstream by virtue of what the phrase requires. Mm -hmm. you know? So that works for me, and I encourage, I encourage you all to do that. <laughs> you know? It's like, why not? Sure. It's, it's a great advantage to be able to do both. One approach that I never did have any success with is the, um, the U-shaped tongue thing that some players talk about. Mm -hmm. Some have even, I think in the, uh, in the little Walter book that Tony Glover put together along with, um, what's his name, Gaines, those guys. Um, the did, little did, Walter I, story? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's called Blues with a Feeling. I think it's the name oh, yeah. of the oh, book. Oh, gotcha, yeah. yeah. The one that's on the little Walter. Yeah. With Scott Dirks as well. Yeah. Um, I think there's a, some information in there from somebody who knew Walter or hung around with him or something. Something about this U-shaped yeah. thing that supposedly Walter would use on rare occasion to get some extreme thing of sound, you know, mm -hmm. extreme type of tone. Maybe so. Who knows? I look at it like... I'll never know until I keep trying enough to, you know, get it to be of some use to me. Yes. One of the, I, I really like your spirit about that because in my experience as a teacher of this instrument for almost 25 years and I regularly yeah, transcribe okay. music of, of our greats and work with students is that uh, a lot of times people form their opinions too soon, mostly based on their lack of ability to follow through and to uh, take a technique long enough, yeah. and far enough, to really be able to warrant a uh, uh, a stance or an opinion. Yeah. And in this case, like you bring up for me, for them personally, and uh, it's I think a lot of people stop before they reach full uh, fruition of what that whatever that is. Yeah. Can can take them whether it's a musical concept or a technical concept right. or. Um, so I appreciate you bringing up that up because I, I think a lot of people can do a lot more than they think they can by just applying themselves. Yeah, and, and but with the recognition that you know all students of harp playing, um, we all want to get there as soon as we can. You sure. know, you want to get to some place you <laughs> imagine of, of some level of quality, and so this brings up that thing that I had uh, mentioned before about the economics of playing harp, you know, how are you going to spend your resources in terms of the way you practice? What, what, you know, if you're getting pretty good results with tongue blocking, everybody goes, well, I'm, I'm going to stick with it, mm -hmm. you know. I'll, maybe I'll get around to the other thing later, you know. And there is something to be said for, you do want to get to a certain point of mastery with some approach. It might be helpful. I don't know. It might be helpful to sort of focus on one and let the other come along later on. I don't know. I can only speak of my own development, how it worked sure. for me. I don't know what would work for somebody else. But I think the best thing is to be aware yeah. of, once you're aware of what the possibilities are, then that's what you need is the awareness. Then you decide. Mm -hmm. You know, great point. Yeah.